Today, we're going to continue our discussion on Thevenin and Norton equivalent circuits. We're going to look at Thevenin and Norton equivalent circuits when there are dependent sources present. Um, this isn't going to take too long because we've already got a pretty good introduction to the topic. Um, after this lecture, there is a mini lab. I just posted the mini lab assignment sheet on Moodle earlier this morning. Um, and then we also have an in class assignment. All right. So, Thevenin and Norton too. So let's say that we have the following circuit where we have a 20 volt source in series with a six ohm resistor. Bless you. In series with a dependent voltage source that is supplying two IX of voltage. We're gonna have another six ohm resistor down here. Ten ohm resistor up top, like so, and we are trying to find the Thevenin and Norton equivalent circuit of this network with respect to these terminals. Uh, I'm going to call this terminal A and this terminal B, and our assumption here is that B Thevenin positive polarity terminal. will be at A and I Norton will be in the down direction. So to find our Thevenin equivalent voltage, thank you for that, absolutely. IX is this current flowing through the six ohm resistor, but thank you very much for that. So to find our Thevenin voltage, we are simply going to solve for that open circuit voltage, however we feel is appropriate. Six ohms. 10 ohms, like so positive, negative, seven in. All righty. Oh, and I do need to remember to define IX here. So how could we find our seven in volt? Or I guess another way to put this is which circuit element is our seven in voltage actually the voltage drop of? The six ohm resistor that's vertically oriented, right? Uh, because the 10 ohm resistor isn't part of a closed current carrying path, we can see very easily that there's no current flowing through it. There's no voltage drop over it. So we can effectively slide that Thevenin voltage to the left and see that the Thevenin voltage is just the voltage drop over the six ohm resistor that's oriented vertically. So how can we solve for that voltage? We find IX, IX times six ohms will give us our seven in voltage. Absolutely right. How can we find IX? KVL, absolutely, right? So if we wrote a KVL equation, we would have negative 20 volts plus six ohms times IX minus two IX plus another six ohms uh, times IX is equal to zero, which means 20 volts is equal to 10 IX. IX is two amps. 
and V Thevenin is 12 volts. Okay. Where the only thing that might seem weird here is that I've observed that the only current we have flowing in this circuit is IX. So I was able to write everything in terms of IX, right? Um, we know that uh, IX is defined as the current flowing down through the six ohm resistor, but since no current can split off and flow to the right through the 10 ohm resistor, um, the current that's flowing through our voltage sources has to also be IX. Now we'll find I Norton. Redrawing my circuit here, and I'm going to short out my terminals. So how can I find I Norton? Mesh seems reasonable. So let's call this I1 and this I2. We don't have any current sources or anything like that to worry about. Um, we do have a controlling variable. So we could say that IX is I1 minus I2. Um, then we're going to have our two KVL equations. So that's going to be negative 20 volts plus 6 ohms times I1 minus 2IX plus 6 ohms times I1 minus I2. is equal to zero. Um, then we would have six ohms times I2 minus I1 plus 10 ohms times I2 is equal to zero. And we can solve this system to find I1, I2, and Ix. So let's do that real quick. So three by three system, um, our coefficient for I1 in our first equation is one, our coefficient for I2 in our first equation is negative one, our coefficient for Ix in our first equation is negative one, constant term is zero. Then we have six plus six is 12 I1, um, negative six I2, negative two ix constant term is positive 20. for our third equation we have negative six i1 positive 16 i2 zero ix zero is our constant term solving forty over seventeen 15 over 17 and 25 over 17 amps. Um, by inspection, we can see that I Norton is simply I2 is 15 over 17 amps. So, now we need to figure out what our thevenin resistance is. So, what's it going to be? So, we know for sure that our thevenin resistance. RTH 
is simply our Thevenin voltage divided by our Norton current. So 12 volts over 15 seventeenths of an amp. So 12 times 17 over 15. Sixty-eight over five, or thirteen point six ohm. Okay. Absolutely, one way to find our Thevenin resistance. Now, I want to look at our circuit because we should be able to figure out what our Thevenin resistance is by finding the equivalent resistance of the network. So. Recall that we need to be looking at a dead network. So our 20 volt source is gonna be off. We have a six ohm resistor up here. Sorry. Two IX source like so. Six ohm resistor here. Ten ohm resistor here. Okay. If we look in through those open circuited terminals, what do we see? We see something that we can't use resistor combination techniques to figure out because there's a dependent source, right? Um, the presence of that dependent source really kind of messes things up here. So we are going to talk about how we are going to handle cases where we have a dependent source in our system. And we are going to use a test source method, okay? So effectively what we're doing is we are going to excite our dead network with a source of our choosing. I'm gonna leave this blank for now because we get to choose whether it's going to be a voltage source or a current source. And we are going to effectively need these two quantities. The test voltage drop across the terminals of our network and the test current flowing into the network of interest. So really, all that we are doing by applying a test source is using Ohm's law, the fundamental definition that says, if I have literally any network and it's a two terminal network, the ratio of the voltage drop across the terminals of my network to the current flowing into the terminals of my network is the resistance. That is literally the experiment that I made you guys do on the second day of class to determine the resistance of that 510 ohm resistor and how we introduce the topic of resistance and of slack. So we get to arbitrarily choose a test source to excite this circuit with. We can choose a voltage source or we can choose a current source. It does not matter which one we choose. It does not matter which polarity or direction that we choose. It does not matter the size of the source, the magnitude of the source that we choose because we're dealing with a linear network and we know from superposition and linearity that it will scale, right? If we scale our input by a factor of two, our output scales by a factor of two, and those ratios are still gonna be the exact same thing, the resistance. So we can just pick a source, any source we want, and solve for this equivalent resistance. So let's start by proving it with a voltage source. Um, so, Emmelyn, I want you to tell me what value of voltage source we're going to use here. Let me redraw my circuit while you tell me the value of the voltage. Three volts. Sounds great. Grayson, could you tell me the polarity? So, positive polarity on top or, po or positive polarity on bottom? Positive polarity on bottom. All right. So three volt source, positive polarity on bottom. 
So here's six ohms. Run these terminals here. Minus plus three volts, as this is what was suggested to me. All right, so by choosing to use a voltage source, we can see right from the jump that V test is negative three volts. Half of our work is done. Now the only thing we need to figure out is that current I test. How are we going to solve for that? Oh, I need to find IX here because uh, IX is still a thing. Um, I don't think we could do it with a single KVL, but we could definitely do it with two, which would be commonly called mesh analysis. I'm on board with that. Um, we could do nodal. We could do anything that we wanted to do. Uh, but let's do mesh. I think mesh is going to be the easiest thing to do here. Let's call this I1 and this I2. So we can see uh, our mesh equations here are going to look very similar to the mesh equations we just wrote a moment ago to solve for our Norton current. Um, we know that Ix is going to be I1 minus I2. Um, still no current sources, so we're going to have 6 ohms times I1 minus 2Ix plus 6 ohms times I1 minus I2 is equal to zero. Then we'll have 6 ohms times I2 minus I1 plus 10 ohms times I2 minus 3 volts is equal to zero. We'll solve this system for I1, I2, and Ix. So let's see. One, negative one, negative one, zero. Six plus six is 12. Negative six, negative two, zero. So let me just double check here. Six and six. So 12 I1 minus six I2 minus two Ix. For our third equation, we have negative six I1, 16 I2, zero Ix positive three. Solving, we get 334ths of an amp. fifteen sixty eighths of an amp. And negative nine sixty eighths of an amp. Um, by inspection here, we can see that I test is simply negative I2. So that's negative 15 over 68 amps. So our Thevenin resistance is negative 3 volts over negative 15 68 of an amp which is gonna look like one over five over 68 or 68 fifths ohms. The exact same thing we got taking the ratio of the seven and voltage to the Norton current. So by choosing a three volt test source, positive polarity on the bottom, which I let you guys pick those numbers, we get the exact same result. No trickery or foolery here. Let's do a similar thing using a current source. Um, Kieran, what size of current source do you want me to use? 10 amps, all right. And Chandler, what direction do you want me to choose? 
So direction up. Yep, not a problem. I, I caught what you were throwing. So 10 amps direction up. So here's the test voltage we're interested in. Here's the test current that we're interested in. And by inspection, when we choose a current source, we are effectively defining what our test current is. And now we have to solve for that test voltage. So what analysis method do you guys want to use to solve for that voltage? So we could do nodal, we could do mesh. Let's do nodal um, for two reasons. A, we haven't done nodal today, and B, we're solving for a voltage. A nodal analysis lets us solve for voltages directly. So let me identify my nodes here really quickly. So that's all one node. That's a node. That's a node. And that's a node. Um, where do we want ground to be? Bottom, sure. Typically speaking, I choose my negative polarity terminal, or excuse me, my ground terminal to be the negative polarity terminal of my test voltage here as well. But if there were lots of voltage sources, I would probably choose it to where it would make my math easier. But here, it's not going to make much of a difference. Um, so let's call this A, B, and C. And we can see very easily right now that our test voltage is nothing more than our nodal voltage VC. We have a controlling variable. Um, so we can say that IX is just going to be VB over 6 ohms. We have a voltage source, so we can say that twice IX is going to be VB minus VA. Let me put a... We have this super node, so we're going to add this current this current and this current together. So KCL at our super node is gonna look like VA over six plus VB over six plus VB minus VC over six. Then we have our KCL at C. So that's gonna be Sorry, yeah, VB minus VC over 10, thank you. Is equal to zero. Uh, and then we have VC minus VB over 10 ohms minus 10 amps is equal to zero. Um, so I'm gonna just make a substitution here. So this is gonna be VB over three ohms is equal to VB minus VA uh, because twice VB over six is one VB over three. I do not want to restart now, stupid computer. Um, so now let's solve this three by three system. So in my first equation, I have negative one VA. I have positive one, let's see, no, uh, one minus one third. So that would be two thirds VB, zero VC, constant term of zero. In my second equation, I have positive one sixth VA, 
one six plus one tenth VB and a negative one tenth VC. In my, uh, my constant term is zero. In my third equation, I have zero VA, negative one tenth VB, positive one tenth VC, constant term is 10 amps. And I find VA is 24 volts. VB is 36 volts. VC is 136 volts. V test is VC is 136 volts. So my Thevenin resistance is 136 volts over 10 amps is 13.6 ohms, which is the exact same thing as 6 V8 over 5. So it did not matter whatsoever that we chose to use it as a current source. Did not matter what its value was. Did not matter what its direction was. We were going to get the same result, however we happened to do this. Okay. So yes. How did you get the VB over VA again? So I substituted VB uh, IX is equal to VB over six into here. Yeah, or multiplied that by two. So if two IX is, uh, so that would be two times VB over six, which is the same thing as VB over three, yeah. So this is seven and a Norton equivalent circuits when we have dependent sources. We can either solve for the seven and voltage, solve for the Norton current and take the ratio of those two things to get the seven and resistance or we can solve for the Thevenin resistance of a network containing a uh, dependent source directly by applying a test source to the dead network. I want to be really, really clear here. The test source method can only be used when we turn off our independent sources. So every time we applied that test source, the 20 volt source on the left-hand side was turned off. If you don't turn off uh, if, you're, if you're not looking at a dead network, you're not finding the Thevenin equivalent resistance correctly. All right, so that is Thevenin Norton equivalent circuits with dependent sources.